Hi everybody, just a quick video to talk about the books I read in June. Didn't really read much, as you can see. Um, I think I've read one or two Kindle ones, but nothing I'm going to go into this month. I just want to get these ones done. So let's start with The Loved One by Evelyn Wall. This tells the story of a guy named Dennis Marlowe. He's a young Brit living in Los Angeles in 1950s Hollywood, trying to make or he was trying to make his life as a poet and writer within the studio system with his friends. Now another friend recently died and Dennis is charged with arranging his funeral. Now Dennis is not a very successful poet and actually works as a pet mortician. So he goes to the paradise of the Whispering Glades Memorial Park, think Hollywood Forever or Forest Lawn, that sort of place where these great big uh, gates and tombs so a completely different place than where he works and he meets there a girl named Amy who uh, makes up the corpses the bodies and Mr Joy Boy the embalmer now Mr Joy Boy is in love with Amy he's a lot older than her and Dennis falls in love with Amy and Amy with him and they start going out now Dennis is a very naughty boy because he passes off famous poetry as his own. When Mr Joy Boy finds this out, he tells Amy and Amy breaks it off with Dennis and she gets engaged to Mr Joy Boy. But in the end, they both let her down with tragic circumstances. So I really enjoyed that. I gave it four stars. It's a little bit, it's quite dark to be fair. It is dark, but yeah, very, very good book. I then read A Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. This is a prequel to Jane Eyre in which we meet, or it's inspired by Jane Eyre. We meet uh, Creole heiress Antoinette Cosway. She marries a young Englishman, which is said to be Mr. Rochester, and she becomes his first wife, the mad wife he keeps in the attic. Now, she's grown up on this land, and at some point she lived with her mum and her brother. There was a big devastating fire. She went away to stay with an aunt. Her mother and, and, and her brother went somewhere else and the brother died and the mother basically went mad. Mr. Rochester, although he's never named Mr. Rochester, we know that's who he is, um, marries Antoinette and everything's fine until he finds out that her mother went mad and then he starts calling her by her mother's name, Bertha. Oh, excuse that. Um, so she was not mad, uh, old Antoinette, <laughs> pretty much until he told her she was mad and then she went crazy. And I still don't even think she is mad when I, I read it, but yeah, interesting. I didn't like it that much. I think I only gave it like a two. It was all right. And maybe I'll read it again and I'll enjoy it more. One book I really did love was War Horse by Michael, Michael Marpurdgo, which we all know was made into the big famous sh uh, West End show. So basically we have Joey who is a horse. Um, he, he's born and grows up on a farm and his young owner adores him. The owner's father, the farmer, sells Joey when he's desperate for money to the British Army. And he goes obviously into the front lines to uh, as a cavalry horse. Now this, it, like Black Beauty, is told from the point of view of Joey and during the story Joey is first obviously a British cavalry horse and then after his uh, soldier is killed he's put towards working with somebody else and at some point ends up in the German hands and they do take care of him and Joey learns that, learns that the, the Germans aren't much different to the British, they take care of him, they look after him, they don't want to be there either and you know, at this point he's used to transport the war wounded from the battlefield to the hospitals and he's looked after by a young girl named Emily who again adores him. At some point he ends up... My phone's vibrating. Hang on a minute. In the no man's land. Sorry. In the middle of no man's land and both sides stop firing and they're looking at this horse and one British and one German soldier go out to see Joey and they have a chat, like civilised people, like, like, you know, in the middle of war, like, you know. 
and they toss a coin and the British soldier wins and takes Joey back to um, the British side where he's transported to the vet station. Now it has to be said that at this point this young soldier learns that the German soldier is no different from himself, that he's just doing what he's told to, he doesn't want to be there particularly and both of their concern is for the horse which just shows you that sometimes man, although they can fight, they can also be decent. He ends up at the veterinary call where he is covered in mud, he's very dirty, but as he, Joey, because of course it's told to his records, approaches um, the stables, he recognises a voice and it's Albert. Albert has joined the vet call to look for Joey. Joey has turned up but he doesn't recognise Joey because he's covered in mud. He's always going on about how wonderful Joey is, the colour of him, the fact he's got a star on his nose um, and they're cleaning him up and his friend says, Albert, Albert. <laughs> and eventually tells him um, that it is Joey and it's such a lovely story at the end uh, he ends up back on the farm with Albert but there's this big bit where the British are going to sell them off because we don't want to transport a load of horses back because a lot of them are sick and dying anyway and they're just going to go to the slaughterhouses up and bought by the slaughtermen for food um, but Joey doesn't and it's a very beautiful part of the story and ah. Uh, Oh, it's just a beautiful story. Um, I read Karen Slaughter's Last Breath. This is a prequel to uh, The Good Daughter uh, about the lawyer Charlie Quinn. We learn a bit more about what happened to Charlie when she was uh, a child. Um, and this is our, as a lawyer, she wants to help those who have no one else to turn to. So um, a teenager named Flora Faulkner begs her to emancipate her from that, her grandparents, saying her grandparents are dra uh, draining her trust fund and, and all that, but can't and, and doesn't know what to do, so she wants emancipation. So Charlie wants to help her because she, she remembers what it was like when her mother was, was killed and she had no one else to turn to. However, Flora is not all she seems and um, yeah. It was good. Not as good as The Good Daughter. I thought that was brilliant, but yeah. Now a book I did. I think I gave it four stars though. It's all really good. Um, I gave five stars to the next one. And that's Ashram Assassin by Andrew Cartmel. So this is the Paper Black Sleuth series. This is book two. The Paper Black Sleuth is a spin-off from the Vinyl Detective series. It's set in the same world with some of the same characters crossing over from one to the other. And in fact, Cordelia is the sister of DJ Stinky Stanmer uh, from Vinyl Detective, the Vinyl Detective's nemesis. In this book, um, Cordelia is hired by the local ashram uh, when a collection of rare and valuable books are stolen, signed by, as most of them are signed by the person who um, set up the ashram. Um, Cordelia is hired to find them, not with some difficulty because she was pre previously barred from the studio for selling weed to the other students, but however, she goes on the hunt for these paperbacks and there's various bits of murder and mayhem. She almost gets killed several times herself. She does find the volumes, she finds the killer and all is well. What I loved about this book is there's this one scene and I can never remember what the name of it is but she she is in a pub with this character named Mac and Edwin um, and they go into a pub, the Albert, again it's from the Vinyl Detective and yeah this is coming up to it now they go to the pub because Mac works in a charity shop where she's found sorry, try put some of the um, books and but not the signed copies but still some of them anyway she goes into the, they go into the pub and Mac character goes to, and orders a pint of beer something like Frostbite Fruzy by Tiny Rebel. To me, I mean, it was a Tiny Rebel beer anyway, <laughs> which made me really smile because Tiny Rebel is a, a small independent brewery. 
situated in South Wales. In fact, they are literally a two minute drive up the road from me. I have been to their brewery, which also houses a pub and restaurant. It's absolutely brilliant. So I always get excited when I read about places I've been to or places I know or things like that, little things like that, because Tiny Rebel is very much, to us it's a very local beer, even though it's stocked obviously countrywide, because this is set in West London. So, but to me that was just absolutely fantastic to um, have the Vinyl Detective go into a pub, not the Vinyl Detective, the paper actually, Cordelia goes into a pub with two other people and one of them orders a beer that I can literally go up the road and just buy <laughs> from the brewery. And I could go around the brewery. Sorry, I get a bit excited, like I said, but yeah. So, But it was a really good story. Anyway, I do, I do really recommend both the Paperback Sleuth series and the Vinyl Detective. The next Vinyl Detective is coming out next year. And the last physical book I read was Karen, another Karen Slaughter, and this was Blindsighted. This was my TBR jar pick, which I do every now and again. Um, this, these books are generally ones that have been on the TBR for more than three years. And I am slowly working my way through them. Uh, so Blindsighted. Um, this is set in a uh, sleepy town called Hartsdale, Georgia. Medical examiner and a paediatrician finds um, a local college professor dying in the local bathroom. I will say dying, it says dead on the map, she's not dead when she finds her. She can't save her though, she tries and she dies in her arms. She has been cut with two deep knife wounds that form a cross across her stomach. Geoffrey Tolliver is the police chief, he is Sarah's ex-husband, yeah, because we like to make things difficult in these books, um, and he's in charge of the investigation. A couple of days later, another victim is discovered and this victim has been laid out in a crucifix position on Sarah's car. Sarah does manage to save this one however it's too much for the poor girl and she takes her own life um, in front of the college professor's sister who is also a police officer. Yeah there's a lot of going on in this book. Could it be as Sarah found the first victim and the second victim was like been displayed on her car that this has something to do with Sarah's past. It was really good. It was a good four star read. So those are all the physical books I read in June. I forgot what month we were in. I did read a couple of uh, Kindle books. One I remember was called The Mother's Secret and I can't remember who wrote it but it's called The Mother's Secret. Claire Wainwright or Scott's right or, Scott, or something like that. Right? And I enjoyed it but I do have a few issues with it. So that book tells the story of this girl named Georgia and her sister Kate. Now when Georgie was very young she was very much coddled by her mother and kept at home. She wasn't allowed to go out very far you know she wasn't allowed to leave her mother's side basically um and she she's 37 in the story which makes it really hard to believe and she's never needed her birth certificate i find this and i'll explain why this is weird so she wants her mother her birth certificate her mother's got dementia so her mind is slightly going so her sister takes her mother out so she can go and find her birth certificate. Every time she's asked for it in the past, it's, oh, you don't need it for that. I'll give it to you later. Um, oh, you don't want to get married. She does it with a partner and has a child, but they just never bother getting married. Fair enough. So she goes looking for her birth certificate and doesn't find it. But what she does find, she does find her sister's information. But what she does find is uh, um, some information about a child that went missing, a baby that was stolen from the hospital. Um, the day that she was supposed to be born. So she puts two and two together and concludes that she is the baby and that her mother stole her. Now, it's a very good story, don't get me wrong, and the premise is really good because we know this does happen. But in 37 years, she's never needed a birth certificate. She's never opened a bank account. Now, okay, I can let that one slide because and she has got a job. Her partner, She's been with him since she was a teenager. So it's possible that her wages go into his bank account. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I do know that you need a birth certificate to open a bank account. Another thing is she has a driving license. How did she get driving license? You need a birth certificate or a passport, which needs a birth certificate, to obtain a driving license. And that's the first thing I thought when, I said, she's never seen a birth certificate, she's got a driving license. How is that possible? Even in the 90s, I'm absolutely sure 
you needed your birth certificate. I haven't been able to find out for sure, but I'm pretty sure I, I've had to provide my birth certificate when I got my driving license. My provisional, even. So, anyway, that was the problem I had with that. Overall, it was a really good story, but it's just those little things. Had they made her a bit younger, maybe around 25, and had her not been driving, maybe she'd been cycling everywhere, I would have found it more believable. But the fact she'd reached 37 and never ever needed a birth certificate, I find that very hard to believe. So as you can see, I filmed this one in my office, my library, with my books behind me. I'm going to try and start filming in here now with all this sort of stuff because it looks better. I hope you've enjoyed this brief wrap up of all the books that I read in the month of June. As you know, I am still working my way through War and Peace. I am officially halfway through, over halfway through the book now. This is why I'm not reading as much of other stuff because I'm ahead at Goodre on Goodreads and I'm trying to get that done. Yeah, I'm trying to get through it, not that done. I'm enjoying it, don't get me wrong. So I'm also currently reading The Emerald City of Oz, which shouldn't take me too long because it is a children's book. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I will hopefully see you with some more videos very, 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 very soon. I'm, and for those of you who have been concerned about me after my father's death, thank you so much. I miss him very much, but I know he would want me to go on, be happy and have a great life and look after Jennifer because he absolutely adored her. Um, so I'm looking at that. Yes, occasionally it does get me down, but I know he would not have wanted me to be miserable. He would have wanted me to have a great life. I mean, I could have another 50 years. I'm only 50. I could live for another 50 years and I know he wouldn't want me being miserable through all that. So, um, taking it every day, you know, some days are hard. My birthday day wasn't hard, but the day after was for some reason. But it's all good. I'm, I'm doing okay. We're all doing okay. So every now and again it gets to Jennifer and then of course that gets to me because I don't want to see her upset. But. So anyway, thank you all for caring so much. It means the world to me that you're there for me and I will see you soon. Bye everyone.